Hello and welcome to the Battle of the Bulldogs as Columbus Grove travels to the Fieldhouse to take on Elida. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, just a few short weeks ago, you and I were standing on top of a press box trying to stay warm. We had turned in the hat, coats, and gloves. We move inside to the gym. Couldn't be happier that basketball season is underway. Oh, I'm telling you, we're in one of the nice facilities in Northwest Ohio, and it's opening night for Columbus Grove Lady Dogs, and Elida's already played one early on in the season, so it's going to be a very entertaining game as Columbus Grove returns one of the premier players in small school basketball in Northwest Ohio, and Miss uh, Lauren Ochmoody. We see a steal here in the early going as JoJo Knight moves it up the floor, but she loses it back to Columbus Grove. We'll take a look at the starting lineup, starting first for the visiting Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. They are going to start, they already mentioned, number two, Lauren Achmoody, number 10, Jade Seifkert, numbers 21, Kendall Palti, number 22, Abby Steckscholdy, and number 23, Nicole Nesby. As you see Achmoody get onto the board quickly. Oh, yeah, she did, too, on a dribble drive action. Those, those bright what color shoes you want to call them, green, purple, but she took it right down the lane to the rim and banked it in for a quick 2 nothing lead. Nice feed on the inside. This one's going to get poked away by Steck Schulte. We'll take a look at the starters for the Lady Bulldogs of Elida. They're going to start number three, Leah Ramirez. Number four, JoJo Knight. Number 10, Jordan Gladden. Number 14, Lily Seifert. And number 21, Alexis Ward. This is a Elida team that last year went into tournament play um, had a little success early in the tournament for me and knocked out in a very tough matchup, but they looked good. They did lose a lot, so they're kind of back in that rebuild mode. Not a ton of depth, only nine on the roster here to start start with as they are building this back up. But Coach Jenkins, she does a good job of coaching these girls up, getting these girls ready. There's still oh, a absolutely. lot of talent on this roster, and this is a great measuring stick for them here to oh, start the season. You're exactly right, partner, and it's also a good measuring stick for Columbus Grove. I mean, they had a great season last year. You know, and but this is our opening night, and there's nothing better to come into a facility like this for your first game. And I'm sure the jitters are playing a big part on both ball clubs right now, more so probably Columbus Grove. And you mentioned the, the season that Columbus Grove ha had a year ago, 18-9 and nine overall record, only fourth in the NWCs. Most people remember the NWC last year was incredibly difficult. You had that Lipset girls team. You had that Delphus Jefferson that ended up Crestview. taking home the lean side. You had the Crestview team with the talent they had as well. So, I mean, finishing fourth in that conference is not a knock. It was it was a very, very tough conference, as it will be again this year. Delphus Jefferson bringing a lot back as well. But this Columbus Grove team, once they hit tournament play, really hit their stride, got all the way to the regional final before it being knocked out by an incredible tough Toledo Christian team. So you know they're still a hungry coach writer wants to come back, wants to make sure that they get off to a good start this year, but they are looking to build off of that success that they had in that tournament run. Yeah, he's bringing four re returnees back to this basketball team like you said. They didn't get the 20 wins, but they got on a roll and started playing their best basketball right there at the end of March. And as a coach, that's what you want. And they did. And they got beat by a very good Christian team. Nothing to hang their head about. So jump ball, possession arrow, favors Columbus Grove. Still 2-0 here in the early going. 6.25 left to go in the opening quarter. Ock Moody's going to bring it up for Columbus Grove. You see Lida has some good size underneath. They have length. They have athleticism. So it's going to be put to the test here as Columbus Grove with their quickness of this guard play. Ock Moody going to fire from three, and that one is good as Ock Moody connects on a Dale's concrete three-pointer. Nice looking form there, quick release, and like you said, knocked that son of a gun in, didn't she? So that opens up the lead to five at nothing, as we're gonna have a whistle on the other side. I think they got Steck Schulte with a hand check. That'll be Steck Schulte's first of the game. Inbound comes into Ramirez. Ramirez works around to the right, gets into the lane. Looked to go up. Looked like maybe she was trying to pass that off down into the corner, but had it knocked away. Last touch by Elida. Yeah, That's I think cool. Akmudi got her hand on it, Nate, and, and knocked it off of uh, Ramirez on the dribble drive off of her ankle out of bounds. So you see Elida's going to want to play a little bit of pressure, see if maybe they can't get a couple of extra possessions here. Columbus Grove breaks the press rather easy. Hawk Moody gets all the way into the lane. She got deep into the lane before she gets that one off the glass for two more. And Coach Jenkins wants to take a timeout. 
Columbus Grove on top, 7-0 here in the first. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. 5.39 left to go here in the opening quarter. It's been all Columbus Grove as they are on top 7-0. We say all Columbus Grove, but really it's been all Lauren Ockmoody. <laughs> you couldn't have said the statement any better. It's Ockmoody 7, Bulldogs, Elida Bulldogs, nothing right now. Elida does a nice job of breaking the press. That one's going to be off the mark as Jojo Knight wasn't able to connect. And you can tell it right now, Columbus Grove is just speeding Elida up a little bit. As that was not a shot that you would be used to seeing Jojo not being able to miss. But unfortunately, she just couldn't quite get it under there. Rushed the shot. Did not connect. That three-point try is no good. Rebound comes down to Columbus Grove. Good look there on an open look there by Lily Seifert. Seifert. Excuse me, my apologies. Zach Moody, she's going to let another three-pointer go. This one's going to be off the mark, but rebound comes down to the Lady Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. Ock Moody, one more time in the lane. This one's off the front of the rim. Rebound ends up into the hands of Emma Mitchell. Yeah, she got her hands on that one. They weren't going to get it back. And now JoJo Knight had a little trouble with the pressure down low. And she walked, turnover. So right now, Columbus Grove causing a little bit of issues for Elina on the defensive side of things as Elina will try to slow down and Lauren Ockmoody in the Columbus Grove offense. Well, I think if you're going to do one thing, the first thing you got to do is take her strong hand away, which would be her right hand, and make her play with her weak hand. And if she's going to score, she's going to have to create her own shot. Here's Nesby down low, and she's going to travel. Turnover by Columbus Grove. Ball will go back to Elida. Good job by Elida defensively digging down into the post, forcing that turnover. Columbus Grove's going to keep the pressure on here as JoJo Knight looks to inbound it. Gets it into Ramirez. Ramirez works against Fortman. At least Fortman causes her to go with the left hand. Ramirez able to maintain the dribble, but in some trouble, has to get rid of it. Knight quickly down low. Glad and gets that job. one up in the go in. Elida gets on the scoreboard. And Glad is going to go, or excuse me, Mitchell's going to go to the free throw line. Did uh, you notice the pressure fell off of their shoulders after that bucket went in? But what a great job attacking that half court run and jump. A quick swing with a dump down along the baseline and then the cutter coming down the lane. She's going to get the old fashioned and one here. Great job there by the home lady Bulldogs. So Olivia Sanders. I believe that's who checked into the game, and it is. Olivia Sanders into the game for Elida. As you see, Lee Ramirez had to walk off the floor a little bit limpy. She's getting over and getting treated by the trainers. And hopefully for Elida, she's going to be able to come back in. That one's off the mark. Sanders not able to get the rebound. Knocked out of bounds. And they're going to say last touch by Columbus Grove. Abby Steckscholdy comes back into the game. Yeah, she's going to give Paul to you a quick break. Sanders going to work along the sideline, has to get rid of it. That one's going to be too far. It looked like maybe it might have been tipped by Columbus Grove, but the official right there says no. Out on Elida. Yeah, that's where they can dribble it. That's, that's danger zone. Half court and in the corners is danger zone, and that's where she went. She had nowhere to go with it. Got to get a quick swing there and then attack from the, the backside. Mitchell was able to get her hand on that entry pass, but Columbus Grove gathered it back in. Missed shot, but they get it back behind the three-point line. Ockmoody moves it around the perimeter. Foreman passes it along, gets down low to Nesby. She can't connect. JoJo Knight comes up with the rebound. Knight quickly moves it up, but leads too much for Jordan Gladden to gather in. Yeah, one thing that Elida wants to do, you can tell Coach Jenkins and the rest of her players, they want to push the thing and make it a full court game, especially off of rebounding. 3-13 and counting here in the opening quarter. 7-3, Columbus Grove on top. Hawk Moody trying to direct the offense. Calls the play in. Little matchup zones giving Grove a little bit of problems. Forced another turnover, did the lady Elida Bulldogs. Emma Mitchell did a great job of causing a little bit of disruption there. 
that ends up going out of bounds. Last touch by Columbus Grove. We'll see if Elina is able to break this press. You've seen the pressure give them a little bit of trouble. Emma Mitchell looks to get rid of it, gets it up to Sanders around midcourt. She gets it up into the front court. Sanders being double guarded, has to find somebody open. Mitchell comes open. Trying to find JoJo Knight down low. You got to think at some point, JoJo Knight's going to have to get a lot more involved here in this offense as Mitchell tried to go up, had that one knocked away. But Elida maintains possession. A lot of action down low there as Columbus Grove finally comes up with it. Another empty possession for Elida as Columbus Grove now is going to look to open up the lead. Three-point shot on its way. This one's going to be no good. Nesby with the rebound. She goes back up with it, gets it to go down for her first two. Big offensive rebound by that young lady in the finish, strong at the rim. 9-3, 2 left to go here in the opening quarter. Knight going to look to drive. Jump stop, can't get it to connect. Gladden tries to go up, and she's going to get fouled. She's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. You know, as she goes to the free throw line, it seems like a good time. Then we talk about the new rules this year, Gil. We're talking about some of the changes that are happening in high school basketball on the girls' and boys' side. When it comes to fouls this year, at the end of every quarter, those team fouls are going to reset. Player individual fouls, they'll stay the same. You still only get the five. That's all you get for the whole game. But instead of carrying on with the first quarter into the second quarter, um, your team fouls, which may really compound on you, you get to restart those all over again. If you noticed, I'm sitting here rubbing my head because <laughs> I've yet to figure out why they did it after 30 years of coaching. I, I thought the game was fine the way it was. There's a quick turnover by the Bulldogs. Gladden can't get that one to go, gets her own rebound, puts that oh, one up. Oh, that's a great effort staying with it right there. Got the steal. Got her hands on another one. So you see Jordan Gladden getting very active here towards the end of the first quarter as Elida has made this a one-possession game. And don't get me wrong, partner, I'm not against the change here. It's going to be interesting. I don't know if they want to speed the game up or what, but it's going to change the philosophy, you know, of the coaches and scouting reports because normally you file the – if you do your homework, you file the ones in scouting reports that don't shoot very well. That's all going to change. Nice block by Elida. And we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on number 21, Alexis Ward. That's going to be her first. And it is going to be interesting. That's, now the, the, that's only the first team foul here for Elida. But if you look up Columbus Grove, they've already got three team fouls, right? That would be a problem for most coaches as you're looking for that second quarter and maybe moving towards the bonus. What we didn't mention, too, is the changes. There's no more one and ones No. If you go to the free throw line, except for if I'm after a made shot, you're shooting two free throws no matter two what. two free throws no matter what. That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. It's going to play into the strategy. You know, at the end of the game on fouling kids at certain particular parts of the game, if you're sitting with only one or two fouls at the end of the uh, third quarter going to the fourth quarter, it's going back to zero. You get an opportunity to, you know, crack, what, seven or eight people or fouls? Well, and that's what I, I think to me will be the most interesting as we move forward. And we'll have throughout the season a lot of time to talk about this and debate it and see how it affects games. I think there it definitely can be strategy that comes into play for teams. Mm -hmm. But – I think the biggest change you're going to see is at the end of games, close games, where teams are trying to make a comeback. And instead of being able to stop the clock to extend the game, to give themselves extra possessions, and potentially sending guys to the free throw line to shoot one in one and maybe come away with an empty possession, they're going to have to start all over. You betcha. So instead of maybe, well, we got six or 17 fouls. As Big you shot see, there. A nice three, put Dale's concrete three pointer yeah. go down for Columbus Grove here with less than a minute to go in the opening quarter to make it 12 to six. But you could be seeing all sorts of philosophy changes when it comes to that because instead of being able to maybe go right off the bat and maybe we'll wait and halfway through the fourth quarter we start fouling, you may have to start right away. Yep. It, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how coaches decide cool. to integrate this new rule into basketball It's not year. so much the head coach, it's your assistants you're going to have on the bench. You know, their, their roles and responsibilities are going to change, you know, with these new rule changes. That last foul appeared to be on number five, Ruth Myers. Which that would have been the fourth team foul, at least here of this quarter. Mm -hmm. Again, like we were just saying, that's not a problem anymore. That's going to go back to zero. Columbus Grove's not going to have to be wary of how many team fouls they have in the second quarter, especially in a game that's, you know, staying relatively close here with 0.2 seconds left to go in the first quarter. 
Yeah, because, you know, the only thing that's really concerned to a coach is individual fouls. And that's, that has not changed. It's still five. Look out. That one ends up back in the stands. And I, they have actually fixed the clock. So it wasn't .2. It's actually 47.2 seconds left here in this opening quarter. As JoJo Knight tries to get it in. And she was losing her balance. Teammate wasn't looking. Akmudi comes up with the steal, takes the bump, and gets it to go down. That's the key word. I don't know if she could have done that two years ago. You know what I'm saying? She's got so much stronger with her body upper and lower and just finished in space right there and made the contact with the defender and got it up on the glass and knocked it in. Nice play by that young lady. So it appears all that momentum that Elida had started to get back is starting to go away and back in the favor of Columbus Grove as Elida once again turns it over. Oh, well, nice Jojo play does there. a great job of getting her hand on that one, but it ends up back in the hands of Columbus Grove as Ruth Myers was able to gather that one in. Here's Myers down in the corner. Going to work to the lane, lets this one go up. A nice block by Gladden, though, as this one goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with Columbus Grove. Yeah, good hustle right there. Appear to be Kendall Palti down there. And, and I'm trying to see who it was for Lily Seifert. Appeared to be. Four oh, seconds nice left to go. This one goes up. It's going to be off the side of the rim as Kendall Palti wasn't able to connect. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. After one, Columbus Grove on top, 14 to 6. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsors, Lee Simmons Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee Simmons Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Also, I'd like to thank tonight's three-point sponsor, Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorator Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Columbus Grove on top, 14-6 here at the Elida Fieldhouse. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Darren, I think the story of that first quarter is Lauren Ockmoody, and she is coming out on fire. She could really not be stopped, and she was able to get to the lane. We saw her be able to pull up from the three-point line, and she looks very impressive. Well, you could see what the scouting report was, you know, just from us sitting over here was to keep the ball out of her hands and keep her from getting opportunities. And uh, like you said, the first seven points went to Miss Ockmoody, and they made some adjustments. And if they're, if they're going to lose, they want to make sure number two from Columbus Grove doesn't beat them. Columbus Grove with a, another Dales concrete uh, three-point shot. This time it was Abby Steckscholdy who gets on the board. A nice out-of-bounds play. Got her feet set from the right corner and just dropped that one in. Nothing but net. So you lie to the big thing that they need to clean up are these turnovers. Is when they've been able to get some prolonged offensive possessions, and they've gotten themselves some pretty good shots, but they've turned the ball over so many times. And finally, JoJo Knight able to get on the scoreboard. They're going to need her to get hot. I'll tell you what, that was a great dribble drive to the baseline. They slid the baseline on the backside, threw the ball along the baseline, then skipped it to the backside for a dribble drive there by JoJo Knight. And she took it up strong, drew the contact, and going to get the old-fashioned and one here. JoJo at the free throw line. Did you happen to notice who that last one was on? Was that on Thompson? Allison Thompson from Grove. I didn't quite catch it, partner. Uh, I believe that might have been Fortman, but I'm not positive. Okay. So JoJo was able to connect on the free throw. Uh, she was able to step up to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line and knock down the and one. 17 to 9. Big now, steal by JoJo. JoJo with the steal, going to go the opposite way. Jump stops, gets the defender to fly by, but can't connect. Rebound comes down to Moody. She's going to push the pace. Works around JoJo. As Columbus Grove moves it around the perimeter. Kendall Palti sends a three point shot. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Seifert. Nice box out by Seifert on the backside. Seifert 
Tries to get around and gets and get to the basket, but ends up bouncing this one off of her knee. Goes out of bounds. You know, what's this tell you? When I saw her grandfather come in, I used to coach at Perry and coached her dad and uh, her grandfather, and he spoke to me coming in the door. It's unbelievable. And that was back in, my goodness, Nate, 96, 97. So, yeah, what's that tell you about my age? Goodness gracious. Ock Moody with a great sidestep to get into the lane. Gets that one to go down as they've been able to extend their lead to 10, 19 to 9. Ramirez runs out of Fortman space. I think Fortman got into the cookie jar right there with her body and slapped it. Yeah. Got her across the arm. Yeah, Ramirez ran out of space over there. It's Columbus Grove got a little bit too aggressive there on the press defense. That is going to be Fortman's first. And now Elida wants to take the time out and talk about it. Columbus Grove on top, 19 to 9 here at the Fieldhouse. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Back tonight's premier sponsor for Elina is Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Elina takes the time out before they inbound it here on their own side of the floor as JoJo Knight's going to go out of bounds. See what they were able to draw up. Emma Mitchell ends up with the basketball. Looks for somewhere to go with it, decides to pull up. Shot is good. Three-point shot is good as Emma Mitchell connects on another Dales concrete three-pointer. Young lady, only a sophomore. Got a bright future in front of her, varsity basketball. Three-point tries on its way for Grove. That one's no good. Ramirez comes up with the rebound. Needs wow, JoJo Knight outlet. up ahead. Knight able to connect with it. As she saves it. Now she's going to get it back. Looks for somewhere to go with it. Gets it down a little to Gladden. Gladden. Got a little twisted up, had to get rid of it. Ends up back in the hands of Columbus Grove. Yeah, that one she's got to get her feet underneath her and get her balance first on that spin right there. A little bit off balance, and that, that caused the turnover. Columbus Grove on top, 19 to 12 on the Charles River scoreboard. And they've just extended that lead by two as Lauren Ockmoody continues just to put on a clinic. Ock Moody already with 13 points here on the night with five, 17 left to go here in the first half. Good baseball pass there by Elida down the floor. Just went off the fingertips of Gladden. She fumbled it, went on the floor after it. There was a held ball as a result. Arrows pointing towards Columbus Grove. Knight able to get her hands on that one, tips it to herself, but Ock Moody gets it right back for her team as Nesby comes up with the tip. Ock Moody looks inside, decides to kick it out. Three-point try on its way. That one's no good as Jade Siefkert was not able to connect. Rebound comes down to Elida. Yeah, Mitchell with another carom off the glass. Big Cypher. steal there by Ock Moody. Yeah, Seifert loses the ball to Ock Moody, gets it up ahead. Stack Schulte lets this one fly. That one's no good. Rebound into the hands of Grove. Ock Moody steps to her left, able to put that one up and in. Yeah, you can't give them second and third chances. If you play zone, you got to make sure you got responsibilities covered. Ock Moody one more time, drops it off to Nesby. Nesby with the easy layup. As Nicole Nesby now has four on the night, and Coach Jenkins wants to talk about it again. Columbus Grove has extended the lead there on top, 25-12. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Coach Jenkins saw a little bit too much there as Columbus Grove turned a couple of turnovers into points to extend this lead out to 25 to 12. And Gil, right now Columbus Grove is just speeding Elina up way too much. They're trying to push and run. But right now, they're really struggling hanging on to the basketball. Yeah, they've got to take care of the basketball, number one. they got to make solid, crisp passes, and they got to make sure their feet's underneath them. 
Sanders gets it up to Glad. She tries to go quickly as she worked around Akmudi that time. Couldn't get that foot to stay put. She's going to get called for the travel and another turnover for Elida. You know, a lot of it has to do with balance, getting their feet underneath them. Inside the Nesby one more time. That one stayed up on the rim but didn't get it to go. Mitchell with the big outlet to Gladden. Gladden with the left hand off the glass. No good. But she's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, she took that one in aggressively. Like to see get that thing in the left hand. It looked like she flipped it up with the right, but she did draw the file in the process. Good outlet there by Mitchell. So Lauren Ock Moody now with her second foul of the night. Going to send Jordan Gladden to the free throw line. On the end of her first two, drops. And she now has four. That's her fifth opportunity already in this young season. So she's been there four times coming into tonight. Gladden's second free throw on its way. This one's going to be short. Hawk Moody comes up with the rebound. Inside to Nesby. Sanders oh, nice does a deal. nice job of getting her hands on that one. Mitchell moves it up, almost has it taken away, has to gather it in. Cypher it. Pulls up, lets this one go, and that one goes down. Back to a 10-point deficit as Elida makes it 25-15. Yeah, good job by that young lady getting it in her opposite hand, pulling up and knocking that jumper down. So there's a big shot there by... Jade. Who was that, that Seifker? Yep, Jade Seifker with her second Dales Concrete three-pointer of the night. Makes it 28-15. The shot's going to be no good. Rebound comes down to Grove. Ock Moody going to slow things down. She brings it up against Knight. 3-10 left to go here in the half. Drops it down to Nesby. Nesby got double teamed, had to get rid of it. Palti tries to drive, gets cut off. Takes it back out to Seifkert. Seifkert back out to Palti. She drives baseline. Nice step on the inside as Palti gets that one to go off the glass. Yeah, you got to be careful closing out on Grove because if you don't close out under control, they're going to blow by you. Ock Moody steals the oh, inbound. Nice can't get it to go. And Mitchell looked like she had a clean block there, but it's going to get whistled for the foul. Now send Lauren Ock Moody to the free throw line. Well, and here's the situation there. You know, you got to handle pressure. Okay, and we've seen it the whole first half. You've got to step to the basketball. And if you don't against Columbus Grove, they're so doggone active with their hands. And, you know, Ock Moody, she, she knows how to play the game at both ends of the floor. And she got her hand on that loose ball and took it up. But that was after what, partner? Wasn't that after another turnover? Yes, it was. So, yeah, I mean, you can't give teams like Columbus Grove second, third opportunities, whether it be by turnover or by offensive rebound. So Ock Moody steps up to the Lee Sanders recipe chicken free throw line, knocks down one of two, and she is going to go to the bench for a breather. Yeah, 16 first half points by the young lady. 31 15, 238 left to go here in the half. Knight brings it up, and she's going to get called for the travel. As right now, Elida just seems to be moving faster than what they can, they can get rid of the ball. They're not. Either they're not 100% sure of what they want to do with it or where they want to go with it, or it's not exactly where they thought it was going to be, and there's not a lot of improvising sure. there. Sure, and you know what? All these things are correctable, Nate. I mean, those you know, give, them, give them the season to get these things corrected. By the end of the season, you're not going to see those turnovers like that or the bad passes. And I'll tell you what, the length and size of this Lady Dogs team, it, it can be a a huge advantage oh, my as goodness. they move throughout this season. When they start gelling and get a little bit more comfortable, you start seeing a little bit more flu fluid play. I mean, we've seen it in spurts tonight. Yep. I mean, they, they do a nice job of being able to get their hands in the passing lanes and have been able to tip things over. They cut down the turnovers, and this really is a different game, at least here in the first Absolutely, half. Absolutely, because they have the size inside. They can rebound the basketball. They have length. Sanders was trying to maybe Euro step there, lost her footing, went down. So another turnover for Elida. She looks to be okay, though. The officials making sure that floor was all cleaned up, nothing wet on it. So we are back underway here. Steck Schulte brings it up quickly, working against Knight. It's an inside to Nesby. Nesby kicks it back out. Good job d doubling down by the Lady Bulldogs of Elida right there, forcing that turnover. Good job digging it out. And 
and exactly what we were just talking about, that length can cause a lot of issues. Able to get in the passing lane that time was Knight and get rid of it. And Sanders loses this one out of bounds. They're going to say last touched off the foot of Sanders, so it's going to go with Columbus Grove. And I think that time might just been a little bit maybe too much that time by Sanders as she was trying to create a little bit of space. Well, she had her handle. initially. She had her on the reverse dribble. That's where you got to attack it because once you get by their hip, you got to go. You cannot take and put the basketball back down in front of them. Fortunately for Ramirez, ran out of space here along the baseline, or on the sideline, excuse me. As right now, even Elida, when they get the rebounds, they just find themselves in a bad position. That time Ramirez had a, a great rebound, but as soon as she turned around, there was two Lady Bull, uh, Bulldogs from Columbus Grove right there on sure. her. Sure. And she it's had nowhere to point. go, tried to go to the sideline and ran out of space. Siak Moody now back into the game for Columbus Grove. Ramirez tried to go for the steal, but sexually able to hold on to it, kicks it down into the corner. Fortman has to get rid of it. And Stecholdy steps up and hits another Dale's Concrete three-pointer. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Ramirez spins in the lane, gets rid of it. She's going to get fouled. Boy, what a pretty move. Little right to left, reverse pivot, spin and finish. Good job there by that young lady. Leah Ramirez, one of the starters from last year, returning for Coach Jenkins. Played a big role on last year's team. She's somebody that they're going to need to lean on. Had been quiet so far in this first half, but able to get herself to the free throw line here. So she'll shoot the in one at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Ramirez's shot is up. This one's going to be no good. Rebound fought for. Still loose, going to go out of bounds, and it is going to go to Columbus Grove. You know, and you made an interesting point coming in on the lightest stats for the year. They've only had 13 turnovers as a team. They probably have 15 right now, yeah, I would I say, and that may be, you know, but you, know, you got to figure they're close to that 13, if not ahead of it. Yeah, definitely. I haven't been keeping track, but, I mean, you'd have to think that they're already close, if not past that number here just in the first half. Foul underneath. I believe they got War or Ramirez on that one. As Ock Moody triggers the inbound, ends up into the hands of Jade Seifert. She now has three Dale Concrete three pointers here on this game. Zulina's got to find some way to disrupt her shot. As I think Jojo might have nice gotten away with cut. one there, and a nice job that time. Alexis Ward is able to finish. Nice play by that young lady. Her, her defender turned towards the basketball and she just back cut her to the rim. Nice pass, nice finish. Palti, long pass down into the corner. Myers tries to slide it underneath to Nesby. This one's going to go out. And with 29.8 seconds left to go, Elida will get the basketball out of bounds. Yeah, Myers had the right idea. The five foot, five inch sophomore dribble drive, tried to throw a little bounce pass. Threw it too, too low to the ankles, went out of bounds off of Columbus Grove. Turnover, visitors. There's Knight working against Fortman. Changes the directions with the left hand, gets it across midcourt, but picks up her dribble in a little bit of trouble, gets rid of it. Alexis Ward had it, dropped it off to Ramirez. Ramirez, though, needs somewhere to go with it. And Ramirez, that was a little bit of frustration right there as Ruth Myers was all over her. Ramirez tried to create some space. Pushed off with that arm. And now Columbus Grove will have a chance to take the last shot of the half. It's okay to create space, but you cannot, you can't make it so, you know, air apparent to the officials. I think like you said, that's frustration right there. And that's, you know, all because of Columbus Grove and their defensive prowess of getting up and attacking. Ock Moody's three-point try is no good, and that is gonna bring the first half to a close. Lauren Ock Moody. 16 first half points leads Columbus Grove as they head to the locker room to lead 37 to 19. We'll step aside and be back with the second half here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for Elida is Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency has served Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and a Bluffton. Welcome back to the Elida Fieldhouse for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Elida Bulldogs 
as Columbus Grove is on top, 37 to 19. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Darren, the, sk the story of that first half, and I can't believe for the first time in my life I called you Darren instead of Gil. <laughs> it's okay. But, but the story of that first half was Lauren Ockmoody as she could do pretty much no wrong. Well, they've, they've went from, there's a big shot there by the young lady, Mitchell. Three-pointer, I think that's her second of the night. Well, it just, it turned out seven to nothing. Elida had to take a timeout, and then they got that first bucket, and then Grove went on another little run, especially with three-pointers, and Elida's had to burn two other timeouts, and yeah, there's a there's a turnover right there. So Elida, you know, coming out, hitting that big basket right there. Let's see if we can't get that thing down under double digits going into the fourth quarter. And we've seen them be able to go on a, a little bit of runs from time to time in that first and second quarter. They showed flashes. It was just that turnover. They just had a really hard time holding on to the basketball. They gave it back to Columbus Grove quite a bit as we're going to have a whistle on the other side here as I believe this one is going to go on Ramirez for an illegal screen. And that is that That's is a tough second. break because I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a move by JoJo Knight to get to the rim there. Took it up strong and made it. Unfortunately, like you said, the moving screen is going to nullify that opportunity in that bucket. Long cross-court pass. Dex only drops it down low to Nesby. Nesby kicks it back out. And we are going to have a three-second violation, I believe, as this one's going to go back to Elida. So both teams, not a clean start here in the second half. But Elida looking to try to take advantage of some of these extra possessions. Mitchell drops it right back to Knight. Knight, full head of steam into the lane, drops it down low. Glad not able to hold on to that one. Tough break there because it's a nice little bounce pass. Got to catch that and finish it. Ramirez, nice hustle to get down the floor, knock that one out. Let's her defense come down and get set. Sure was. Run right where they're supposed to, right down the middle of the lane because that's typically where the ball is going to go. And like you mentioned, a deflection. Seedker. Moves it around, here's Palti, moves into the lane, moves around some trouble. And she goes into Emma Mitchell, as I believe she's the one that's going to get called for the foul. And actually, no, that's going to go on number 10, Gladden. So she must have gotten on her arm. As uh, Palti tried to move around into the lane, she's going to go to three throw line to shoot two. Yeah, she tried to knife her way to the rim right there. And like you said, I think somebody either got her across the arm or with the body, with the hip right there, because I th we both thought it was on Mitchell, but she held her ground. So Kendall Palti able to go two for two from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line as Columbus Grove's trying to get a turnover again. I believe we're going to have a timeout. Elida wants to maintain that possession. They had a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So JoJo Knight on the inbounds ended up on the floor, didn't want to lose possession, so she has to take the timeout. And Gil, as you pointed out and during the break, Elida with just one timeout left here for the game. Mitchell gathers this one back up, and she's going to get fouled as Nesby was all over her putting some pressure as Nesby now will pick up. Let's see, that was Nesby's first here of the game. You know, Mitchell does a really good job with her composure. I mean, they're just, you know, being real physical with her, and she's keeping her composure and being strong with it. Mitchell's going to hand this one off to Ramirez. Ramirez is going to drive into some traffic. Akmuni was right there to try to tie her up, and I believe we're going to have a foul. Yeah, I think they got Steck Schulte on the reach. They do. Abby Steckscholdy now has two, or excuse me, that's her third foul. As Knight has to get rid of it quickly, almost a five second, but Elida gets it in. That one's going to be high off the glass. No good. Fight for the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Grove. Oh, big steal there by the freshman. Cypher it. Able to take that one away. Puts it up. Can't get it to go down, but going to make a trip to the free throw line. Boy, she's got length to her too, doesn't, doesn't she? Both both her and JoJo. Nicole Nesby now with her second one already. She picked up two quick ones here in the third quarter. 
Say for its first shot, it's going to be no good off the back of the iron. So Nesby's going to take a seat. Number 14, Allison Thompson checking into the game for Columbus Grove. Yeah, that's her seventh attempt already this season for the freshman from the free throw line. Not able to connect on either one, but a great putback. Elina can't get it to go. As you see, Kendall Pulte fights for the rebound. Glad yeah, that was glad. Almost had that one down, but couldn't get it to go. After Seifert was not able to connect from the Lee Sam's Recipe Chicken free throw line. I think they got JoJo Knight right there. As Ock Moody is going to go to the free throw line. Lee Sam's Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's is tonight's free throw sponsor. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee Sam's Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. That place is always busy. Well, when you serve good food like that, people tend to go you there. You know, I was, you know, in a rush the other day, the last couple of days being on uh, with Danny. And I go I go by there, you know, 6 o'clock, 6.15. Good night, seven cars deep. Mitchell able to gather that one in. A little bit of a late whistle. I thought it was going to be a foul, but it was actually going to be a travel on Mitchell as the pressure for Columbus Grove is continuing to cause the Bulldogs of Elida some uh, problems here. Yeah, that's one of those where she's got to, you know, plant those feet in concrete and maintain her balance, and she slid that foot, got called for the travel. So substitution coming in for Elida as Olivia Sanders is going to check into the game, as is Alexis Ward. Let's see, Mitchell and Ramirez will have a seat. 41-22, 5.48 left to go here in the third. Steck Schulte sends a three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Ward comes up with the rebound. Big rebound. Knight brings it up. Had to pick up her dribble, and I think that's one of the things that Elina right now is having the trouble with is they're getting themselves in positions where they have to pick up their dribbles, and the and Columbus Grove is just all over them every time they do. Yeah, there is no space, as you see another turnover, this time by Thompson, but Sanders gets it right back. She's on the ground. Knight, and she can't stand up as Sanders had to get rid of it, so she didn't pick up the foul. Got it over to Knight, who was right in front of her, and as JoJo stood up, she got the turnover. You know what? The light is going to be better for this experience. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're playing hard. You can tell that. You know, it's, it, it's, it's getting to them, but they're keeping their composure, and all you can ask for as a coach is they, they lay it on the line and they lace them up and they play hard, and to this point, they give everything that they could. Ock Moody gets cut off, has to kick it back out as Knight comes out of nowhere and rips that one away. Gonna throw it up ahead to Ward. Ward works against Thompson, creates some space, and gets it to go I'll off the glass. I'll tell you what, she did a good job going to the contact, didn't she? That could have very easily been an and one. Good job by the young lady. Good steal by JoJo, kick ahead, finish by Ward at the rim. And Ock Moody that time got her feet tied up with JoJo. She was trying to fight through the screen. She ends up on the floor. As Knight's going to pick up her second foul of the night. Columbus Grove on top, 41-24 on the Charles River scoreboard. Well, we're 53 left to go here in the third as Thompson's going to trigger the inbounds. Fortman brings it up, working against Knight. And the offense gets sent, picked up her dribble. Good defense by Elina, has to hand it off to Ock Moody. She has no space as you see Knight get in there and tie her up. And one more time, Ock Moody on the floor. This is going to be a jump ball, and it will go back to Elida. Good job right there. Elida pinching Ock Moody and trapping her right there. And JoJo, like you said, getting in there for the held ball. Nice job by Elida. Sanders works around, has to change direction, step back, shot on its way. This one rattles about halfway down before it comes back out. Ward gets the rebound, she's gonna get fouled and go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Yeah, that's one of those right there. Olivia Sanders, good job handling the basketball in and out on the three, but the, the two bigs for Elite at this particular time uh, Ward and also Gladden, 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 excuse me, keeping the basketball alive and Ward almost getting the old fashioned and one, but she's going to get two free throws for her efforts. Ward not able to connect on the first. Second shot is up and it is good. Alexis Ward now with five points on the night. 
Moody. Long pass down into the corner for Myers. Myers kicks it back out to Thompson, who tries to get in the lane, gets cut off. Ock Moody sends a three-pointer in, good, as Lauren Ock Moody has her first basket from the floor here in the third quarter, and it's a Dales concrete three-pointer. Yeah, you, you give her that kind of space, and she's gonna she's gonna convert it. Nice job there by the Lady Dogs of Elida right there with a little bounce pass. Nice finish at the rim. I'll tell you what, that was a great recovery as Knight was going to the ground, just threw it to where she thought Gladden might be. Gladden with the hustle play and the touch over to uh, cipher it to finish it, but on the other side, Columbus Grove answers as Ock Moody has some a few more points, and now Gladden's going to get called for the travel. Yeah, she felt the pressure coming from Ock Moody behind, and just like you said, shuffled her feet. JoJo Knight's going to get a quick rest here. I think she dinged herself up a little bit, but uh, she's played uh, exceptionally hard, just like her teammates, and she's going to get a, a blow for her efforts. And now it's going to be Columbus Grove whistled for the travel. So, you know, I think we're seeing, too, you know, we, it's been a little bit of sloppy play. We've seen some turnovers. We've seen some fouls. But, I mean, nothing that you don't see at the beginning of the season. You know, this is the first game tonight for Columbus Grove. Uh, Elina just with their second. You're getting some of these early season, you know, struggles here tonight. And that's pretty typical of teams. Well, and us being both, you know, former coaches in, you know, various sports, you've got to create roles for your kids. And, and depth, and that's what both coaches are trying to do here early on in the season. Nice takeaway by Columbus Grove as Kendall Palti reaches up, takes that pass away. She's going to hand it off to Steck Scholte. Thought about the shot for a second, but decides to pull it down. Good job with the help and recover there by Elida defensively, especially Ramirez. Good job showing and getting back to her lady. She's defending. Steck Scholte. Yeah. Losing her balance as she was drifting to her left when she let that one go, and that's exactly where the ball went as it ends up out of bounds and to go back to Elida. Yeah. Coach of Columbus Grove said, you know, applauded the shot. He just said, you know, get your balance underneath you and your feet set. But he liked the shot attempt. is going to come quickly as Elida trying to break that pressure. Sanders, three-point try, no good. Ward with the rebound. So back out to Sanders. She's going to try again, this time off the glass and good as Olivia Sanders has her first points and there Dale's concrete three-pointer. Well, where'd that start? Ward on the glass, you know, they're, they're attacking the glass and good job there. And just like she did the last time, Ock Moody comes down, gets to the rim, puts that one in as Columbus Grove Goes back on top 18, or, on top, or it's 48 to 30 on the Charles River scoreboard. This three-point try is no good, won't hit anything, go out of bounds and back to Columbus Grove. 2.07 left to go here in the third. Columbus Grove on top, 48 to 30. Ock Moody takes the inbounds. She's going to work it up slowly. As we saw, Elida trying to put the pressure here early in the game, but they backed off a little bit here in the second half. As it was a great job by Ramirez. She read that all the way. But it was just a tad late getting over. Ends up knocking it out of bounds. She's going to take a seat in the front row. <laughs> she did. She's earned a rest, too. She's she put bounced, the work in tonight. She bounced right back up. She wants more. Steck Schulte working against Gladden. Has to get rid of it. Back into the hands of Ock Moody. Look for Nesby down low, off the glass with the left hand and in. Little four out, one in set right there, trying to get the basketball into the post area. Nice entry pass and finish at the rim. Gladden drops it off to Ramirez, who finds Knight. Knight pulls up. That one's no good. Akwundi goes up for the rebound. Loose ball gathered in by Steck Shoulder. Yeah, again, Alexis Ward getting her hands on the basketball. Trying to get it inside to Nesby one more time, but a lot of contact as Ward hit the ground hard. Winds up out of bounds. Last touch by Elida. See Emma Mitchell comes back into the game. Alexis Ward will take a seat. Yeah, good minutes by that young lady right there. Heck of an effort at both ends of the floor, especially on the glass. Nice read by Knight that time to jump that pass and knock it out of bounds. You know, Elida down 20 here, partner, going almost into the fourth quarter. There's a lot of good things that 
you know, Coach Jenkins and his staff, as well as players, can take from this opportunity tonight to play against Columbus Grove. When they go to watch this film and break things down before their next game. Asby's this one going to get knocked out of bounds as she was trying to work on the inside. And we'll stay with Columbus Grove. Under a minute left to go here in the third, Ock Mooney. Going to have the inbounds from underneath her own basket. Nice feed down low to Palti. She gets cut off by Mitchell. Looking for the outlet. She decides to keep it herself. And we're going to have a three-second violation. So another turnover, and it'll go back to Elida. Yeah, when Mitchell holds her ground and gets her hands above her uh, head, you know, I mean, she plays exceptionally tall right there and can cause some problems on the interior with her defensive ability and you know, just playing solid fundamentally. Ramirez puts the brakes on, pulls up, leaves this one short. Steck Shorty with the rebound. Hawk Moody gets back to the middle of the floor, crosses midcourt. 38 seconds left to go, works against Knight. And looks like Columbus Grove may try to work for maybe not the last shot, but to kill some time. Hawk Moody decides to take the left side Step, that one's no good. We're going to have a loose ball, jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. I'll tell you, a really good job with the execution. I know they didn't get the basket right there by Ockmoody, but those other girls, you know, all five were on the same page early in this season for the first game. When he breaks his tape down, he's going to see that the execution's there. Even though the shot didn't go down, all five did what they were supposed to do. Here's Ockmoody. Drops it back off to Palti. Ock Moody takes the three-pointer and gets it to go down for another Dales concrete uh, three-pointer. That is her third of the game. Now she comes up with the loose ball. Seven seconds left to go. Going to move it up quickly against Gladden. Takes the long three-pointer. This one's going to be off the side of the rim, into the hands harmlessly to Ramirez, and that brings the third quarter to a close. After three, Columbus Grove on top, 53-30. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. Charles River in Spencerville is the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they're hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Tonight's premier sponsor for Elida is Web Insurance Agency. Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Welcome back to the field house as Columbus Grove is on top of the line of 53 to 30. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, that third quarter was a lot like the first half. Turnovers and big plays by Lauren Ockmoody. Yep, yeah, that's what you want to lean on with the junior. And it's hard to believe she's only a junior for the numbers she put up. You know, 70% at the line last year, 17 points a game, 6.3 rebounds per game. That's pretty good numbers. And, you know, for Elida, I don't know if they're going to play. I mean, they're going to have some good players they're going to play against, but for the skill level that she has, she's pretty doggone good. Good Beat job. Down low to Nesby working against Mitchell as Nesby's able to get that one in. And that is her sixth point of the night. Or, excuse me, her eighth point of the night. Good job, you know, working her way down there and forcing – Mitchell down underneath the basket. That's where she's got to hold her ground to just maintain defensive presence if she's going to play behind. You cannot let somebody walk you down the lane like Nesby did, but that's a smart play on Nesby's part. Ock Moody takes the inbounds pass, going to lob it into Nesby. Nesby goes underneath the basket and in. Back-to-back -back baskets by Nicole Nesby pushes this out to a 27-point lead, 57-30. You know, when you see that on tape, Ock Moody with a very smart play right there, did not see any backside help. Mitchell went to front it, and they threw the skip pass. That's where a light has got to break down fundamentally defensively. And if that, if your player goes out the backside and you're defending them, you got to let them go and play on that midline. You can't give up that lob pass if Mitchell decides to front. Now, obviously, she plays behind, but that time she sided the front, partner. They saw Gladden come down quickly on the inside. And she lost it as it got poked away from behind. Stayed with Elida. 
And we had a foul on the inbounds. Yeah, I think it was Nesby on the hold right there. Her and Mitchell were fighting for position down on that lower right block. Sanders puts the shot up. That one's no good. Seifert comes down with the rebound, looks to put it back up, and gets it to go. Yeah, that length right there allows her to really get after it. She's pretty quick for a freshman going and getting the basketball. Good job catching it, securing it, and getting her balance and knocking that one in. Here's Seifert. Going to drop it off to Ock Moody. Ock Moody. Thought about the three-pointer, decides to get rid of it. <laughs> I thought it was going to go up, to be honest with you. As Knight able to get her hands on that one, knocks it loose, tips it to herself, fights for it, and comes up with the steal. Good strength there by the young lady, being strong with the basketball. Here's Seifert. Moves to the baseline, step back jumper, no good. Fight for the loose ball between Gladden and Ock Moody. As we have another jump ball, this time it's going to stay with Elida. Good job, both ladies going to it right there. A little step back by the freshman. Did you notice that? Number 14, little step back action, left a little bit short, but great effort by both girls on both teams going after that basketball. Glad looking for somewhere to go with it. Finally has to send it long to Mitchell. Mitchell hands it off to Knight. He tries to go cross court to cipher it and has it taken away by Ock Moody. And another whistle. This time it's going to go against Elida. Yeah, that's a right idea on that skip pass. You just can't throw it on a straight line. You allow somebody to shoot that gap, and that's exactly what happened with Ock Moody. She read the pass and jumped the lane and got her hands on it. Right idea, just a bad angle on that skip. Six minutes left to go in this one. Ock Moody moves it up, working against Gladden. Works on that right side, drops it off. Fortman's three-point try is good as she has the Dales Concrete three-pointer called Dales Concrete Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. How'd that one start, partner? Dribble drive by who? Nice back cut. Nice pass by Mitchell for the dribble drive action. Ramirez. Well, and as you were mentioning on that last possession, so even when Akmudi isn't the one scoring. You still have to account for her. As oh, absolutely. She, as she takes all the focus from the defense, and that's what opened up that shot. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you rather see her score or distribute the basketball if you're playing against her? I mean, at this point, it seems like she can affect it from either side, so I guess you're just picking your poison. You're picking your poison. And you're going to try to see if her teammates can step up, and tonight they definitely have. Well, and that's where the high basketball IQ comes into play. She took the thing down the lane, saw the double team coming, and was very smart and kicked it to the corner. So Ock Moody now with 28 points on the night. As you see, Gladden for Elina going to take it from the inbounds. Drops it down low to Mitchell. Mitchell, turn around, jumper. Can't get that one to go. Ramirez with the rebound. Looks to go back up. Works against Thompson. Underneath the basket. And they're going to call the offensive foul on Ramirez. As Ramirez doesn't like the call, but she definitely lowered that shoulder to create some space, and the official was right there. Well, and, and, and the thing that got her in trouble, what a great effort right there, getting that rebound. But when you turn and you're that low, you're taking the baseline away. And you're, you're putting yourself in a position that backboard, and that's what happened to her there. And she was almost able to make up for it there. She did a great job of poking that one away from Ock Moody. And then Elida, as they were trying to push the tempo, had it taken right back away as Thompson was able to step in and steal that one. Well, you hit the nail on the head. She didn't quit playing. She turned it over, and she came right back defensively. Ock Moody connects on a nail, another Dale's concrete three-pointer. This is now a 63-34 point game. Wow. I hate saying it, but it's a quiet 31. You know what I'm saying? It's oh, a yeah, quiet definitely. 31. It has just come pretty effortlessly is, I think, the big key tonight. Oh, yes. And it's no secret. Coach Jenkins knew what she was running into tonight playing against her and preparation-wise. And she just got started early, and then now she's trying to distribute the basketball. And if she gets her feet set, she's told to let it rip, and she does. Nice job there by Sanders. Yeah, Olivia Sanders with a great move on the inside. Made sure she kept her step. Was able to get that one to go in. Is this one's going to go out of bounds? Emma, was able, Emma Mitchell able to send this one out. Yeah, that's a much better job holding her ground defensively and walling up right there. They call that walling up on the interior. 
and uh, she got a deflection right there. The, the only thing that I'm concerned with is you cannot let your man back you down or your player back you down into the post. You got to hold your ground. So Lauren Ockmoody goes off the floor. I'd imagine that would be the end of it for her tonight. She finishes with another tremendous point outpouring with 31. Oh, great job defensively by the Bulldogs. Ramirez digging down, gliding, good job moving her feet. Ramirez reached in there for the tie up. Jump ball gets called. Possession arrow does favor Columbus Grove, though. You know, Nesby, quiet 10 points there for Columbus Grove. Also, good minutes by that young lady. Ramirez staying active, is able to get her hand on that one. Knocked it out, but it'll stay with Columbus Grove still. Yeah, like you said, partner, good job using your hands and being active right there by that young lady. Thompson gets it in. It's going to be Fortman. She's going to work against Seifert. Foreman goes with the left hand as Seifert tried to reach in and poke it away. She's going to get called for the foul. And I'll tell you what, you know, I haven't been keeping track of team fouls, but the way that tonight has played out, I think we're already seeing a great example of how the reset of fouls would come into play because we would definitely be seeing free throws at this point oh, in the game absolutely. if they weren't resetting at the beginning of each quarter. Sure. And it's going to be interesting, you know, <laughs> tip off tomorrow night. Yeah, tip off, uh, traditional kickoff to the basketball season here in northwest Ohio, especially in the Lima Land area as that shot is off. Mitchell comes up with the rebound. Here comes Ramirez. Ramirez works against Steck Schulte, takes some contact, gets it off the glass. That one's no good. Going to go out of bounds, and it'll stay with Elida. I'll tell you, Ramirez, nice job getting the ball to the rack where they just couldn't get it to fall. But the effort of the Lady Bulldogs of Elida is going to get it out of bounds because of their effort. Ramirez tries to go long. Seifert has to track that one down. Sanders lets a three-pointer go, and that one's good as Olivia Sanders connects on a three, uh, Dale's concrete three-pointer. Another deflection by Ramirez right there. I'll tell you what, Miss Sanders is not afraid to rip it, is she? Look at this, you even get you even get your hands on a basketball. That's right. See, that's why I always got to be paying attention around Can't here. Can't be a souvenir. He wants the thing back. I didn't even see it come through. I didn't <laughs> which, either. Which way did it go? I didn't either. Everybody's <laughs> looking at us. I didn't yeah, have no down idea. Down here marking the scorebook. Yeah. Didn't, I thought it bounced off the front here. Sanders goes to pull that one away. And we're going to have a travel as Gladden got to it. But as she spun around, picked her feet up, you can see the defensive effort from Elida is still there. Oh, yeah. And, and the effort's there at both ends of the floor. It's been a hard-fought game. Both teams have laid it on the line tonight. Thompson gets it into Myers. She's going to work against Sanders. 2.43 left to go here in the game. Myers tries to get it down low to Nesby, but Ramirez was right there to deny that pass. You know, and I look at the Elida stats, one of the categories that Coach Jenkins – and Coach Stewart, they keep track of his deflections. And I'm telling you, they're going to have a ton of them, of deflections off of this film tonight. And there's another one right there as that one goes back out of bounds. I love the physical play inside. It's not dirty. It's just physical and the officials like easy girls. you got to clean it up a little bit inside. But that's good. That's okay. Another deflection. I believe that one was uh, Gladden. Here comes Sanders, works against Myers, pulls it back out. Sanders with the spin move. She has this one blocked. She's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. You know, I like her ability to handle the basketball. I really do. She can take it between her legs or around her back, but the thing that she, you know, she needs to be consistent with, if she's going to do that, Nate, she's got to make sure it's a penetrating move. You know, you can't make it. East, west, it's got to be north and south towards the basket. And once you get that basketball in your front shoulder by the defender, you have to go and go aggressively. So Kendall Palti coming back into the game for Grove. As you saw, Sanders not able to connect on our first free throw. Second one is up, and it rattles in. Nine points for that young lady tonight. Palti has this one poked away. 
Not able to gather it in was Gladden as it goes out of bounds. Another what? Another deflection. Another deflection. I'm telling you, those things, coaches, they, they pay it, keep pay attention. There's another one. Well, we talked about the length here of this Elida team. Very long, you know, but we know that they're young. They're going to take a little bit of time. But this length and this athleticism and uh, some of the physicality that we're seeing, too, can really cause some teams some problems, especially when Elida starts putting it all together. Absolutely. Ramirez fights through the screen. Mitchell right there, but Stexholdy does a great job of getting to the rim. So that one's going to go out of bounds and will stay with Columbus Grove. Yeah, that's one of those where – Coach Jenkins and Coach Stewart can teach the sophomore center, Mitchell. She's got to really hedge that and not let the ball handler turn the corner. And she's going to get better at it as the season goes on in her career. All correctable. Here's Steck Scholten, gets it back over to Palti. Palti lets the defender fly by, sends a three-pointer up, and connects on another Dale's concrete three-pointer. Boy, what a nice job letting the defender fly by, holding her ground and maintaining patience, and then having the ability to knock that thing in. That's a big shot there by that young lady. That's the 11 three-pointer of the ninth for Columbus Grove as they have been able to light it up from behind the arc. Gladden's shot, no good. Thompson comes up with the rebound, decides to keep it herself. Fights good give and defense, go. Defense moves around Sanders. That's going to lead to an easy layup with the right hand as we see a timeout coming from Columbus Grove as I think she, he, or Coach Rader just wants to get some of the the girls in, give them a little bit of uh, some run here towards the end of the game. 68-40, just over a minute left to go in this one. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's free throws are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken or Home Style happens here. I'd also like to thank tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Charles River. Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Minute 14 left to go in this one as Columbus Grove this is looking like they are going to come away with their first victory of the season to open the season. And Sanders has this one taken away. Nice defense right there. That appeared to be Sage Benroth with the reach in right there and the slap away, forcing the turnover. And again, Groves had their hands on numerous basketballs. Also, nice back cut. I think substitutions coming in for Columbus Grove. We see Bella Wilson is in. See uh, Sage Benroth as a Dale's concrete three-pointer is coming in. And I believe that is Shea Rager. Rager. Yeah, the freshman she coming in, checked banging in. in that big three right there. This is her first minutes of the season, according to the numbers that I have. First shot, knocks out, big three. Good dribble drive kick action there by Elida. As JoJo Knight goes in, she's going to go to the Lee Sanders B. Chicken free throw line for the rest of the Players that have checked in for Columbus Grove, New Jersey's number three, Jade Roeder, number 15, Maya Veerhoff, number 24, Bella Wilson has come into the game as well. And uh, I believe we already mentioned number 12, Sage Ben Roth for Elida, number five, Bree Smith, as we mentioned, number 12, Shea Rager into the game as well. JoJo coming in tonight, had six free throw attempts on the season, this early part of the season. That's a good job for her getting to the free throw line. Anytime you can get to the free throw line, you know, they call it a free throw, but that, that shows you're being aggressive. She's quietly got seven tonight. Balanced scoring by Elida. That's got to be a pleaser for the coaching staff. Ben Roth has this one taken away by Ward. Ward works along the sideline. Looks to get rid of it. Here's Sanders, three-pointer on its way. That one no good. Fight for the rebound. Goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with Elida. Only .6 seconds left to go in this one, so pretty much a catch-and-shoot opportunity here for Elida before this one goes final. Yep, .3 is in the books to, to get a shot off. Oh, there it is. And some miscommunication by Columbus Grove left Olivia Sanders wide open underneath as she's able to finish. She had a nice second half. As she was able to put some good points on the board, but when it was all said and done, 
It was all Lauren Ockmooney, her 31, or a game high as Columbus Grove takes away the victory, 68-47. Well, it comes down to first game of the year for for Grove, and I, you know, they have one, two, three seniors, but they're led by a junior who's put up some incredible numbers and will continue to do so. I don't think Elite has seen this kind of pressure early in this season. They're going to get better from it. Again, when you break the tape down as a coach, there's going to be a lot of positives she's going to be able to take. Now, granted, they got beat by 21 tonight. Balance scoring, deflections, people coming off the bench, getting offensive rebounds, putting 47 on the board, bounce passes. All of those things can be positive taken. You know, if you're Coach Schrader from – from uh, Columbus Grove, you build on it with your returning players, in which he had four of them. Uh, you know, he's going to get some bench here, just like Elite is going to, as they they establish their roles. But, yeah, what a good opening night for us in WOSN. And thank you to, to Dave Evans and Steve Smith and the good folks here at Elite for hosting us tonight and for both coaches to getting us the information to put this broadcast on for everybody. Yeah, I'm very excited as we move forward to see Elina later in the year. You know, they, they had a very tough test here tonight against a Columbus Grove team that is looking to go beyond that regional final that they made last year. This Elida team, a lot of potential moving forward, but Columbus Grove is going to be another special team. Looking forward to seeing both of these teams and what they're able to do and how they're able to grow oh, later in the absolutely, season. Absolutely, partner. It's not about what you do at the beginning of the season. It's how you finish in going into that tournament. and. Both of these teams, you know, have a high ceiling. It's, they just got to keep playing together as a group and find their cohesion and their, their roles and continue to be coached by the coaches. But, yeah, there's a lot of Ws to be had by both teams. So that is going to wrap it up for us here at the Elida Fieldhouse. I'd like to thank our crew tonight, and that's Jacob working the cameras up Big top. Big Jake. He's going to go back to the station, do all the editing for us as well. He's a one-man jack-of-all-trades here tonight. We appreciate everything that you do for us. As always, one final time, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs knock off Elida 68-47.